which we have to have Honorable Associate District Judge Gathlaw here. He's going to speak to you guys about bullying, harassment, protective orders, and other criminal acts. And the thing that's called Facebook, I don't know if you guys know what that is, but he's going to talk to you guys about the safety of that as well. So please welcome Mr. Judge Gathlaw. story. This occurred in a town about 45 miles away 
from a bigger city. There's a smaller town. Anybody know how far away we are from Tulsa? About 45 miles. When I started getting concerned about this, um, I wrote down, I keep a journal, and I, I kind of just put down my thoughts for the day and some of the protected borders, and I'll explain the protected borders here in just a second. Some of the protected borders that I'd seen, uh, I was concerned about them, and I sent a friend an email saying, hey look, uh, just FYI, this is happening, and sooner or later something bad is gonna happen. And I felt kind of with me doing that, because really what was I doing? I was just acknowledging a problem, not doing anything about it. But I truly felt the way things were going. And I'm going to give you a real experience that have happened here in Bartlesville, in Washington County, in our high school in Mid-High, that have led to some pretty serious acts. And we're going to see some of the evidence from those cases. But I truly felt like it, if we don't do something about this, something worse is going to happen. You see the 10-year-old girl committing suicide. You see the 15-year-old the, uh, the girl committing suicide because of bullying. I truly felt that was going to happen here, and that's kind of how uh, just from my complaining about it, uh, one thing led to another, and all of a sudden I'm here speaking to y'all. So what do I do? I handle what's called the protective order docket. The protective order docket is pretty simple. It's just like it sounds. If somebody feels like they are being harassed or stopped or assaulted, they can come to court and say, I need an order that says that Bobby can't come near me. Let's assume Bobby is the one who's causing all the harm here. It would say, Bobby can't come, come anywhere around me. He can't call me. He can't talk to me. That's what an order of protection does. Uh, it's what I enter if I find that there's evidence of, of this type of activity, okay? Where this is happening with me, with you all, is it's happening in schools. Sorry about that. It's a little loud. This is happening in schools and it's leading to people coming into court that are 15, 16 years old uh, and asking for help because they have a pattern of these kids picking on them, calling them names, uh, putting things on Facebook, texting them, and it creates a pattern of harassment or bullying. And they come to me and say, hey, this is what's happening. I need an order of protection from, from Bobby, from Billy, whoever it is, from Susie. And I grant that. And there's some serious consequences for kids at school about that. It'll keep you from going to school, keep you from going to school events. And this has happened here recently, and it's caused some, some issues for the school system. But what I've seen, where I really got concerned, I saw 15-year-old girls writing the most profane, vicious, hateful, racial, uh, you, any way you want to describe it, attacks on things like Facebook. Out in the open, they put these things out there. We're going to see a couple of examples uh, of what I'm talking about. But this is happening, and I, quite frankly, I just got angry about it. So what am I seeing, girls? I'm sorry. And this is really not, maybe not, eighth graders, I'm a little more concerned about you, because you're going to be going up to ninth and tenth grade where I'm seeing more of this. leaving messages on their phone, it's putting stuff on Facebook about them, even if it's not sent directly to them, but they're putting these things out there to where the victim comes to me and says, I'm really scared for my safety. This has gone too far. I also see uh, the breakups. Now this is, we're a little early here, right? The six, seven, eighth graders. Um, but, I know we're not that early. It's happening. What also is happening is, say a young man, the young girl and they break up. The young man starts pursuing the girl. Uh, they're broken up, starts calling her late at night, uh, does the Facebook posts, uh, texts, uh, coming by the house, leaving notes on the locker, it's just over and over again, to the point where it's getting a little bit over the top. And I want you young boys to girls too. You don't own the other person. Uh, you're in a relationship, that's great, that's wonderful, we're all happy for you. But if things don't end right the way you want them to, you have no right to that person to do and say whatever you want to that person or about that person. So I see a lot of the breakups in court, people that think it's gone too far, uh, but mostly it's the kids. Girls, I tell you, I've seen a lot of girls. Um, and where it happened was I had about a three month period where we had about 11, 12 protective orders, which is a lot of, of high school kids. Um, I've had the three-on-one girl fight, where three girls are fighting one, it's all on videotape. How many of y'all have a cell phone? 
How many of them have cameras on them? Same number. Wow. All right. How many of y'all are on Facebook? Right. So this is this is not this is a reality. On all these fights that I've seen, they are recorded on somebody's phone. Uh, I've seen the fights with boys, where you have all these people standing by doing nothing. Now, I don't want anybody here to jump in and try to stop a fight that they can't stop, or I don't want anybody to get, put themselves in danger, but I've seen those fights, and I've talked to kids at the high school, and I know that those kids were sitting in the high school that I had seen fighting, and I had seen standing by doing nothing. But what I've seen are these fights that are going on with nobody having the courage to stop it. I've seen all these posts on Facebook with nobody having the courage to stop it, to speak up and say, knock it off. End this. It shouldn't go this far. And that's happening over and over and over again. Um, <coughs> excuse me. One of the Facebook issues that I had, and we're going to see one that's a little tame from what I've seen. There's a girl on there. She's 15 years old. And when she came into court, I was surprised. She was blonde hair, blue eyed, a little, little tiny thing. And she was the defendant in a protect board. In other words, a victim had come forward saying, I need protection against this girl that's gone too far. She's saying some awful things on Facebook. I fear for my safety, okay? So this girl, we'll call her Susie. Susie's on Facebook, and she's texting and saying, or, or posting and saying, uh, I'm gonna beat this girl up, I'm gonna, I'm gonna confront her, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that, calling her all these horrible names, I'm telling you guys, horrible names. Uh, I've been around locker rooms, I know what's said. This girl puts a grown man to shame as far as the words that she was using. Alright? And the way that she was describing to the girl. So Susie's making all these comments on Facebook. All of a sudden another person comes on Facebook and says, Oh yeah, you've got to shut that girl up. You've got to you've got to go smack her. Uh, you've got to put her in her place. And I'll drive you to do it. It was Susie's mother on Facebook, encouraging her daughter. I, I hear a lot of y'all talk, I, I appreciate y'all would be a little quiet, alright? Um, it's going to be hard if there's a lot of talking going on. I hear a lot over here, so please be quiet. <clears throat> but what we're seeing is a lot of people that get on Facebook trying to encourage somebody to, to perform an act of violence. And in this case, it was the girl's mother who was doing this. I've seen brothers come into court who said, yes, my sister needs to go do this, and I support her in, in what she's doing, talking about uh, performing an act of violence or making threats. I don't know what's happening. It's kind of crazy. But this is, what's, this is what I'm dealing with. And when people do that, what does it do? It creates an environment. It creates uh, just an overall hostility that grows and grows. And it's encouraged and it's fostered. And it gets bigger and it gets worse. Because people are there to support the bullying. Remember our magical bully and Johnny and the Cobra Kai? They had friends that made their bullying possible. We hated them in those movies. We couldn't stand them. It's happening in protect bullying today, the same thing. Friends are condoning it and supporting it. So they're using text, they're using Facebook, fake texts, fake Facebook profiles, let me tell you, that doesn't fix it. If you think you're being smart by going around and creating a, face, a, a fake Facebook profile, that's not enough. If I see, imagine you're in my situation, I'm hearing evidence in court, everybody's raised their right hand, they just want to tell the truth, so help God. Uh, they all come in, and I hear all this evidence of this harassment, this bullying, this horrible activity. And it's from saying, let's just use the imaginary name Susie again. Susie's doing it. Again. She's doing it against the victim. Then all of a sudden, some random person who nobody knows is on Facebook contacting the victim, telling them how horrible they are and how they need to shut up, they need to do this or do that. To me, that's circumstantial evidence that you created a, a false fake uh, Facebook profile and are now attempting to harass this person. So don't think you're getting around the law by creating a fake persona on Facebook or even a fake text. That happens. I guess now you can, there's apps and you can get a fake text number. Out. Okay. Here's one of the examples that I've seen in court. And I have, before we go much further, what I'm telling you all about has happened in court. Uh, the victim in this case gave me permission to use the next two slides that you're going to see. Uh, the case is over. The protective order was granted. This involved 15-year-old girls. Um, one of them may have been 16. <clears throat> Actually, the, the top one here was the, the defendant. She is now 16. So as we talk about this, I've, there, I've had some people come up to me afterwards. They were upset that I had used stuff because in, at the high school, 
and, or at the bit high, some of these people were there that I was talking about. And I don't care uh, if they were embarrassed by what they put on there. They should be embarrassed. But I have, I have permission for the victim to use this. She got this. Now, one thing that's interesting about this, these texts, <clears throat> these Facebook profiles or posts were taken down. They were taken off by the user. But just because you take something off the internet doesn't mean it's really off the internet. You may think that you delete something that it's really deleted. It's not. It's always accessible. Mm -hmm. And in this case, friends had found all this and they printed it off for the girl. Well, that's one way. Once it's on the internet, you can print it off. It's out there forever. Now it's in hard copy form. Uh, and so you have a situation where you, this, this person thought she was getting rid of the evidence. Guys, that information is always out there on the internet. It won't go away. It's, if you can find it, someone will be able to find it. And as we talk about some other things, you need to remember that. So here's what it says for those of you who can't read it. And I apologize to the English teachers for the poor use of, of the English language here. Um, and I'm certainly not trying to be funny. I know there might be some giggling because it is different. Uh, but imagine how the victim feels when she read these things. And by the way, I have one other thing to add. This one offered 10 pages. 10 pages that were turned off. So the, the defendant in this case, if she doesn't shut her mouth, I'll drive all the way to get you and your knife to Claremore and slip some old beater car tires. We should anyways for the night she kept us up all night when she was trying to come fight me. Laugh out loud. She's a very lucky girl. I didn't open that door. Her friend, ha oh yeah, because it wouldn't have been just, it wouldn't have just been you. My kids were there. Ha ha, I got a new knife because I lost my old one. Ha ha, ha ha, I need some entertainment. Sounds like a fun night to me. Now watch, someone's going to beat us to it, and we'll get blamed because we're talking about it on Facebook. Ha ha ha. What do you think happened? The victim got her tires left. Guess who got blamed? Them. Now they may not have slashed the tires. Look, I don't know. I couldn't say for sure that they did. This doesn't help them. This doesn't help them. Just one other thing of note on the, the top row. They talk about their kids. I told you they're 15, 16. Top one. Uh, was pregnant with her second child. And this is the, the language that she was using, the way she was talking about it. Now, you can imagine that that's how she thinks she's going to resolve her problems. What's her kid going to do? What are her two children going to do? All right, so the next one, this one, uh, uh, this next post I'm going to show you, uh, the kid was, I'm pretty confident he was out of high school when I spoke at the high school. He may have been at high, but I, I'm, I'm pretty confident he was at the high school. He thought he would get on and go and help and think it was funny to, to get in and say a few things, take a few jabs at the victim in this case. I think that it was funny. And I'll read it too. And I have to block out most of it. Um, and again, I'm not trying to be funny by reading this. This is real. And for the victim who was hearing this and seeing this, it's very real. Yeah, I go get that hoe, slap her earrings off, kick her in the blank, throw her in the highway, get a branch and chase her down the street with it, take a used tire and roll that blank down the hill. Gouge the eyes out, stick your finger in her nose, lift her up, slap her, stab her, and all other kinds of stuff. Yeah, I about covered it all. For 10 pages, this went on, and not one person had the courage to say stop. Not one person, seeing that this was in black and white writing, no one stood up. Not one of the friends on this 10 pages of posts. And I hope if anything happens today, that today, forward, someone will have the courage to stop this, to speak up when this is going on. Because no one did in this situation. And imagine again being the victim, and for 10 pages, the person who hates your guts and wants to stab you and do all these things to you, just let your car tires, is being encouraged to do it by all her friends. Okay? That's what we're dealing with. And guys, if you can hear you get on, your, and girls, if you hear you get on Facebook and, and think it's funny to throw this kind of stuff out there, you're hurting your friend. Your friend's going to get a protective order because of things you said. This guy never appeared in court. That girl got the protective order against her, really because of this, and that would have done it. But she got a protective order because look what was happening. When, when you create a situation where you're trying to use violence as your source of resolution, and all your friends are supporting you, why shouldn't I grant a protective order against you? Why shouldn't I enter an order that says you can't be around 
this victim. You can't be around her, can't have any contact with her, can't email her, can't go to the same store as her. If you're both in the same football game, you've got to leave. Why wouldn't I do that when this is the type of atmosphere that's being created? And you guys that are going to be going up high, and some of you may be doing it now, and I hope it ends today. This is going to become more of a reality, the things that you will see. And if somebody doesn't have the courage to stop it, it will only get worse to the point where we go back to those, that 10-year-old and that 15-year-old who committed suicide. If this is what you're living in, and you're the victim, you lose hope. So what is the protect for? We've kind of danced around that. I've talked about it. Um, some of you may be wondering what the heck is this guy talking about. I told you a little bit about what a protect for, uh, what does it do? As I said, it keeps you from having contact with somebody. <clears throat> but I think for you all in school, this the bottom one is probably the more persuasive. You'd be excluded from certain places such as school, workplace, church, etc., school events. If you are a person who has a protect order against you. And I, last week we had this happen. And I don't know how it's going to play out. I, I, I've only heard the initial part of it. Uh, but it was at the mid high. Um, and, you know, I want to preface this by saying I, I don't know if, it, if these people will actually get a protect order. But they have one now. They have an emergency protect order. And all kids were on the track team. And the two defendants in this case, the two people who were accused of bullying, no longer allowed to be on that track team until this gets resolved. Uh, I've entered a protective order. A girl came up to me after one of these bills at the uh, at the high school. She wanted to go to some banquet. And the, the defendant who was bullying her was also going to go. And she was concerned about, what do I do? Who gets to go? Well, the reality is that the protective order, if you have a protective order against you, you could be excluded from being anywhere where that victim is. Anywhere. Church, banquet, you'd have to get up and leave. All right? I, I have law enforcement here today. Uh, they'll say they don't like to try to figure out who was right in the initial protect order. They're just, just going to see who has a protect order against them. Now you've got to go, or you can be arrested on site for being there. So a protect order, if you have one against you, it can keep you from going to school, and that's out there. Uh, better protect orders that I, I don't like doing this, but if, if the reality is that the other person can't go to school in peace, the grand protect order. If that means you can't go to school, well, you're going to have to go homeschool or do something else. But those are the consequences for picking on somebody over and over again to the point where they feel like they need a protection order. Mm -hmm. By the way, I, I'm fine to have any questions if I can see you. There's a couple lights that I might not be able to catch anybody raising their hand. If anybody has a question, just raise your hand and let me know. So who can get a protect order? The law has kind of changed in this area. And again, I don't want to get too bogged down with it. Uh, <coughs> It's one of those things where it used to be for people who were victims of domestic abuse, where it's a, you're in a relationship, it's a family relationship, um, <clears throat> boyfriend, girlfriend, roommates, those were the type of people that could get protective orders. But now, it can also be any person claiming stalking or harassment. Stalking means the repeated following, we'll talk about that. Harassment means you're just bothering them, bullying them, uh, carrying, putting more on them, uh, making threats, that's harassment. But you must have police reports. And again, uh, there's a lot to that. You have to call the police, notify them that this is going on, and make a report. And in fact, a, a decision from the Supreme Court of Oklahoma yesterday just uh, said that if you don't have a police report, you cannot get a protective order. They made it very clear. <coughs> so this issue down here in the bottom part, that's where I'm seeing the kids in high school. Somebody comes in claiming they're being bullied. So what, is, what constitutes stalking and harassment, and really what constitutes bullying? Here's the definition. This is the legal definition in the state of Oklahoma. The willful, malicious, and repeated following or harassment of another in a manner that would cause a reasonable person to feel frightened, intimidated, threatened, harassed, or molested. Would that do it? Think about what you see at school. Is what you see at school, what you're seeing in the hallway, what you're seeing somebody else do to somebody else, would it fit into that category? All right. One thing about protective orders, too, that's interesting for you all. How old are you all? How many of you all are 13 years or older? Raise your hand. That's mostly what the same grade. Seventh grade. Okay. Seventh and eighth grade. Well, guess what? You may or may not know, as a juvenile, there are certain things that can happen to you because you're under the age of 18. Protective order is outside of the juvenile code. What that means is you can have a protective order against you 
as early as the age of 13. And the other thing about protective orders is they are public records. Juvenile records, if you're under, if you commit a crime as a juvenile, it's not public record. If you have a protective order as a juvenile, it is public record. And there are reasons for that, otherwise, who's going to know that you need protection if it's not public? So at the age of 13, you can have on your record a protective order against you that's going to follow you in any search that somebody does. It's public record. All they got to do now is go online, type in a website, and it's there for them. They will see it. The protective order lasts three years. So that protective order will follow you until you're at least 16. If you're, if you're 16, 17, 18, you'll take you on college. You'll have that protective order against you. Your college uh, will be looking at that. Uh, employers will be looking at that. That's a serious consequence that I don't think a whole lot of kids realize. That uh, this will be something that actually goes on your record. All right, so there are some crimes that happen. You all are, as I said, you all will be free from uh, being charged as an adult, but you can still be considered a juvenile delinquent. In the law, what that means is you can be held in juvenile detention, you can be on probation, have a supervised probation officer following you around, making sure you're doing everything okay. Uh, but there is a crime for stalking and harassment. If you do it the first time, it's up to one year in the county jail plus a fine. A second offense is what we call a felony. It's a very serious matter. A felony will keep you from voting, keep you from having certain rights, uh, greatly affect your future. The second act of, of uh, harassment or stalking, bullying, would be a felony up to 10 years in the Department of Corrections, or excuse me, five years in the Department of Corrections, and a fine on a third offense up to 10 years in the Department of Corrections. A protective order that you have, that someone has against you. Let's say, your person is a defendant on a protective order. means the protective order keeps you from having contact with the victim. Let's say that victim is at a basketball game. Tonight, there's a basketball game in high school. That person, the victim is at the basketball game, and you show up. And you see the person there. So you can wave to them. Uh, send a note over, whatever. You've now committed a crime for what you can be arrested. As a juvenile, you would be taken into custody. Uh, we'd figure out what to do with you at that point. Juvenile detention is a possibility. But if you were to go there with a protective order against you, that's what would happen. If you're an adult, you get one year in the jail. So as I told you earlier, some of the consequences of having these protective orders. You'll be able to, to attend school or school events. That has happened here in our community. Um, anger management for 52 weeks. So that, how many weeks are in a year? It's a lot of classes that you have to go to in the evening pay for them yourself if you have an anger problem. I've done this for, I've entered uh, an order uh, ordering a teenager to go get anger management. And he had to go ahead and pay for it. Possible criminal charges and it will be on your record. One thing I'm gonna add, I'm gonna go back, I forget things of, of what I try and talk about. I was talking to y'all about some of the examples of protective orders. I told you about the girls, the three girls meeting up one. I don't know if I told you about the five girls meeting up one. Uh, if that happened here recently. The interesting thing about this is that of those five girls, um, one of those five that beat up the victim and had protective order against her is now sitting in a jail in Kansas awaiting murder and first degree charges. I don't know if she did that. I don't know if she committed that crime. I have no way of knowing that. It's up in Kansas. She very well may be innocent. I don't know. But I can't ignore the fact that when you think violence is your response to everything, when you think that um, the way to handle things is to just pester somebody until they can take no more. It's not a big leap that you're going to commit, commit other acts of violence. All right. I don't know what happened up in Kansas. Uh, I'm somewhat familiar with it, but it, it could be that she's in. I don't know. It could be that she's around the wrong crowd. One of those five girls came up to me and said, you don't know what you're talking about. You weren't there that night. No, but as a judge, I can judge those situations and figure out who's right. But I actually said, I didn't have anything to do with that fight. This is one of the five. Um, she had to protect her against her for a while. And I said to her, did you, were you there? Yes. Did you try to stop it? No. Did you watch it all happen in front of you? Yes. Well, there you go. All right. You didn't help the situation. You made it just as bad as you allowed these people to do to this girl what, uh, what they did. Now, I'm sorry, I, I kind of forgot that, but I think it's important to talk about some of those situations that are real situations from here in Bartlesville, Oklahoma. So Facebook, we've talked about it. I'll show you a couple more examples of some Facebook issues. 
got on Facebook, and took the effort to move their little mouse over there, and click the like button. That's disturbing. That creates an environment of violence. Those people thought that they might be funny putting, click, click, uh, clicking that little like button and saying they thought this was a neat little video. Right? It's not funny. It's not funny games. You may think that what's happening only happens in your school. It doesn't. It ends up in my courtroom. You're bullying, you're harassed, uh, putting things on Facebook. I see it in court. The police officers that are here have seen it. All right, next I'm going to segue into something a little different. Um, and for those of you who know what I'm talking about here, will have an impact on you. Those that don't, I'm glad that you're pretty innocent. But there's some other concerns with social media and, and the criminal consequences. It's called sexting. I always have some hesitation about talking about this with six, seven, eighth graders, but it's a problem with six, seven, eighth graders. Let me tell you what I'm talking about. When you all are under the age of 18, you're minors. You are legally children. I know you don't like to hear that, uh, but you're children. If you send an image of yourself, a naked image of yourself, you just committed a very serious felony of child pornography, of possessing child pornography. Um, this is a common occurrence. This is an example. A young man, a young girl are dating. They're young. Uh, the young girl wants to send a picture of herself to the young man. And she sends it. It's a, it's a naked picture of herself. Any picture or video camera which a child under the age of 18 years is in lewd exhibition which has the purpose of sexual stimulation of the viewer is child pornography. Translation, next picture for video. Alright? Now, I know my daughter's up there hiding her face right now because she's embarrassed that her dad's talking about this, but I'm very serious about it. Alright? This is happening in other jurisdictions, not here yet, other jurisdictions. The police have charged both the uh, young girl in that situation and the young man with possession and distribution of child pornography. And the reason why is those images have value out on the internet. There are people that you don't know that will get access to those, those images and they will use them. And in, the, in the context of the boyfriend and the girlfriend, it's sad to say this, but most relationships are going to have their ups and downs, their breakups. And what's happened, there's a phenomenon of a website for ex-boyfriends to post those pictures to the world. Um, so girls, guys, if you're seeing pictures like that to somebody, they're going to be accessible to somebody else that you didn't intend for it to be you. But above and beyond that, it is a felony. It's a very serious felony. And you are in possession of child pornography. So who could be charged with this crime? In the, in the case I gave you, a boyfriend and a girlfriend were both charged with possession and distribution of child pornography. And I think as, we, as, as things start to be seen a little more often by law enforcement, by courts, you're going to see this happen more locally if it doesn't stop. The person who sends the picture, let's in this example I gave you the girlfriend, she sends that picture, she just committed a felony of distribution of child pornography. Because even if it's her own picture, and even if she has the permission of her parents to send it, the, the consent of a parent does not change the crime. So she's committed a, a felony distribution of child pornography. The person who receives it, the young man, the boyfriend who receives it, is now in possession of child pornography. Now, if he sits down to his friends or even shows it to his friends, he's now committed a crime. And of course, if you had a friend take that picture, it's producing child pornography, making child pornography, that is also a crime. All three can be charged. In a situation that is more likely to happen, let's use the locker room example. A girl sends a picture like that to a guy. Guy has it, starts sending it on to his friends. Now you have new felony counts for each one of those acts that it was sent to. The young man can be charged for that for showing it off in the locker room. Alright? Y'all may think it's um, an issue that's just you and your boyfriend, girlfriend issue. It's not. Uh, there are consequences beyond just your relationship that deal with things like child pornography. The punishment for child pornography is a very serious one. Um, I guarantee you, we'll spend time in jail. We'll have to go to some serious, serious counseling. Um, if you're in charge, you also have to register as a sex offender. So 20 years of Department of Corrections will be $25,000 fine. If you're a minor, the charge itself may not be viewable to the public.
but your registration as a sex offender would be. So you go to school as in college, you have to register as a sex offender. Now everybody see it on the internet who, what it is that you get, even though you were a minor at the time you did because you, you know, registration as a sex offender doesn't uh, doesn't stop this good drink. Alright. Mom's getting mad at this when I say this, but if you think it's just between you two, uh, if your parents are complying that, the person who's gonna complain, follow them. And mom's getting mad because the moms will be right there with them. This is out of the back there shaking her head. Uh, moms will be just as bad as the fathers will. Here in Marshall, Oklahoma, a few years ago, I don't want to get too far into this, but it was an interesting situation where uh, a, a young man and a young girl were, were in a relationship and they were uh, breaking the law by some of the things that they were doing. Uh, they were in love and, and may still be to this day, I don't know. But the father found out about it, the father complained, and the young man was charged with a crime. Um, you know, I, I think. I've been where you all are. I've sat in these seats. I'm a central cup. No, you don't call them cups. Uh, you're still cups? Good. I'm still a central cup. I remember what it was like. I've stood on this stage before as a student. I've sat out there as a student. Uh, this is my favorite school. The relationships that I can still have today, I have from this school. You're going to be close with one another, with your friends. Next month, I'm taking a trip with my friends from high school that I met right here at Central. My grandfather went to Central when I was in high school. I love this place. I'm concerned for it. I want you all to look out for each other. I want you all to make sure everyone is doing what they're supposed to do and is right. My hope in this meeting, oh, sorry, that's possible. My hope in this meeting, look out for one another, be there to stop the violence, be there to stop the bullying. All right? Have the courage. No one's had the courage in all the cases that I've had to stop them. The fights that I've seen on video, the Facebook posts, no one had courage. And I hope you all have that courage to stop this. When you see something wrong that you know is wrong, that you do something about it. Don't do anything that will hurt your future. And certainly if you are being harassed, stop the bully. You do have rights. And if you are the person doing the harassing, doing the bullying, they have rights. And they will use them. They are exercising them. That's how I ended up here today. Because kids have found out that they can't come to court and seek help. Thank you all for your time. Thank the teachers for letting me come out of class and, and hearing me ramble.